What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel where today we have five wide receivers that are absolutely must avoid for your upcoming fantasy football seasons. Now these are five guys that I just don't think are worth the draft pick at their average ADP and you should look elsewhere. If you guys more like videos like this and want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe, smash that like button, comment if you're new here. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Now up first, we have a guy that I know everybody is really high on because of his athletic ability. But for me, my first pick I'm absolutely avoiding is going to be Malik Neighbors. Now, when you see Malik Neighbors, you see an athletic freak, somebody who rivals even Marvin Harrison Jr. in this rookie class. And was he really high rated coming out of college? I think he was top five over the last 15 to 20 years in terms of a wide receiver prospect. But he's going to the Giants. And when you look at this Giants passing offense, there are some heavy causes for concern. This is an offense that only threw for 3,300 yards last season. They haven't had a 1,000-yard receiver since 2019 when Eli Manning was the quarterback and Odell was the wide receiver. The Giants haven't averaged over 200 yards passing per game since 2019, and Jones is coming off of an ACL injury. I know that Malik Neighbors is going to demand a lot of target share, but in an offense that seemingly can't get anything going as far as the passing game is concerned when you don't have a team that's averaging over 200 passing yards it kind of limits the receiver's abilities no matter how good of a receiver they are when you look at their passing ranks since 2020 they placed 31st in 2023 26th in 2022 31st in 2021 and 29th in 2020 this leaves a lot to be desired with the giants and you know, I just don't trust Daniel Jones. He has an alpha receiver now, but what is he going to do with it? Uh, I'm not going to take the risk on picking him as the wide receiver 19 when I feel he should go much later. Uh, you know, he's going before guys like DK, DJ Moore. Like, these are guys that should be going before him. These are guys that I feel have much higher of a ceiling and a, a whole higher lot of floor for this upcoming season than Malik Neighbors. So, you know, just the Giants in general, again, not a knock to him, but this offense is so volatile that I'm going to avoid him at all costs this upcoming year. Now, up next, we have a guy that I've talked about a couple times on this channel, and I want to put a disclaimer out there. I do not hate Devontae Adams. I love Devontae Adams. I wish him the best season as a fan of his. However, when it comes to fantasy, I'm going to be avoiding him at all costs. And there are a couple of reasons for this. Um, first off, he was 69th in catchable target rate last year, 52nd in target accuracy. He was first in unrealized air yards. That's how many times he was targeted without getting reception. Um, how many yards passing it would have been. Uh, on top of this, Pierce wants to run the ball. They want to give their running backs 20 carries a game. And that leaves a lot less target share for Devontae Adams, potentially. When you look at Devontae Adams' stats last year, among 80 wide receivers with 50-plus targets in 2023, he was 70th in yards per target, 27th in yards per route run, and 22nd in pro football focus receiving grade. These do not, you know, bode well for an elite receiver that we all know him to be. We all know Devontae Adams is one of the best receivers in the entire NFL, but he's on a horrible offense. When you look at his quarterback play that could potentially be next year, we're looking at Gardner Minshew versus Aiden O'Connell. Last year, Minshew with a Colts offense that was ranked top 10 for their own line. That means that he was getting good protection. You know, there, there was some potential there for the Colts, and that kind of is why they were so successful. Minshew was 23rd in deep ball catchable pass rate, 24th in pressured catchable pass rate, 23rd in overall catchable pass rate so his receivers were not receiving very accurate passes they were not receiving very good balls and for an elite receiver like Devonte adams it's going to become even more frustrating if he can't get some decent quarterback play when you look at last year Aiden o'connell his quarterback was 25th in deep ball pat uh catchable pass rate 27th in pressured catchable pass rate and 33rd in overall catchable pass rate these do not, you know, make me think that Devontae Adams is going to have a really successful season. I think he's going to have some weeks where he has 20 plus targets, and then there are going to be some weeks where he has, you know, three or four 
and that's not going to be necessarily his fault, but it might be because of the quarterback play, because of the new type of offense that they're going to be running. Um, I just don't see Devontae Adams being worth drafting at this point because there could be some weeks where he just puts up goose egg or goose egg likes uh, numbers. And for that reason, I'm going to be avoiding him at all costs. Up next, we have a guy who's currently going as an upper wide receiver two, and that is Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith finished 19th overall in wide receivers last year, but I don't think that that tells the whole story as to how inefficient he was last year. He was 62nd in red zone targets, 22nd in fantasy uh, points per game, 33rd in yards after catch, 37th in yards per route run, 44th in yards per reception, 45th in target separation, 37th in fantasy points per route run, and 67th in route win rate. Now, I don't think necessarily Devontae Smith is a bad player. However, when you look at this offense, um, an offense that just recently added Saquon Barkley and are thought to love to run the ball, I don't see Devontae Smith having a very successful season at his average draft position. I think he should be going probably toward the mid-20s as a wide receiver too. Like He's going before guys like DK who are number one in their offense. Pittman, who are number one in their offense. DJ Moore, who's number one in his offense. Like, I don't understand the reason behind choosing Devontae Smith. I do think that the Eagles should have less woes than they had last year. But with the addition of Saquon, um, I don't see Devontae Smith, you know, replicating the success that he had during their Super Bowl run. I think that he's going to struggle to get more targets in this offense and do more with them. You know, this is a guy who participated in a whole bunch of routes for the Eagles and was always on the field, and he still was only the wide receiver 19. Uh, I think you add in a back that is looking to play better in Barkley. Barkley is undoubtedly better than Swift. And I see, you know, a guy who might even go behind Dallas Goddard as far as targets are concerned. Um, There are multiple guys I would much rather have than him for his average draft position, so I'm not going to grab a whole lot of Devontae Smith. I think he is must avoid. Now up next we have Jalen Waddle, who is currently going as a low-end wide receiver 1 at the wide receiver 15 currently, and I just don't understand that positioning at all. He was 31st in targets, 63rd in route participation, 32nd in catchable target rate, for uh, 21st in fantasy points per game, 61st in snap share. He only had four touchdowns, and this is while also having fourth uh, most accurate targets and eighth in yards per route run. Uh, You know, he is a phenomenal athlete. There's no doubt about it, but we missed everything that made him great the previous season last year. He was only a wide receiver 16 or better in four of the 14 weeks that he played. Uh, You know, it doesn't bode well for somebody that we want to take in the early rounds, like the third round, second round, who we want to be able to produce those fantasy points. He hasn't been there uh, in quite some time. He doesn't show any sign, uh, to me, of being that wide receiver one. Tyreek demands so many targets in that offense, and with guys like Achan and Mostert getting, uh, you know, going in the backfield, I feel as though Jalen Waddle has even less targets that could come his way. I do think that he is probably going to be a thousand yard receiver, but when I'm looking at my first round talents and guys that I want to be my wide receiver one, I want to be my wide receiver two. There are too many guys coming after him that I would much rather have. He's no business. He has no business being a wide receiver 15 as the second fiddle in his offense. I don't care who it is. I don't care how great the offense is, but putting a wide receiver two in a wide receiver one draft position uh it doesn't make any sense to me i i just don't see any purpose in drafting Jalen waddle where he's currently going and i would avoid him at all costs and last but not least we have a guy who everybody thinks is going to have a phenomenal sophomore season but i'm here to tell you to hold your horses uh, because Zay Flowers has some outliers when it came to his fantasy performance last year, and one of the big ones is Mark Andrews was out from weeks 12 to 17, and that's when Zay Flowers' best production was. 
Now, overall during last season, Flowers was 31st in fantasy points per game, 45th in yards per route run, 41st in target rate, 45th in target accuracy, 26th in targets, 33rd in receiving yards, 31st in fantasy points per target, 34th in fantasy points per route run, 31st in fantasy points per wide receiver. And this is a guy who is the Ravens' number one wide receiver. He was unproductive when Mark Andrews was in the lineup. You know, he didn't really have any big weeks where he was a top wide receiver that everybody was hoping that he would be until week 12 after Mark Andrews went down and got hurt. So when you think about this Ravens offense, this is an offense that definitely runs the ball first. They just added Derrick Henry and they said, you know, Derrick Henry, they saw what he saw, uh, what he did in Tennessee and they're going to give him a ton of carries. This is a Ravens offense on top of that that threw less than 500 times last season. And with a healthy Mark Andrews back, you know, I don't see Zay Flowers getting the same type of production toward the end of the season that he was getting. And as a result of this, you know, I think that he is outside of where he's being drafted. Absolutely. He's currently going in the mid-20s for wide receivers, and I honestly view him below a lot of wide receiver twos because the Ravens just aren't known for throwing the ball. I would much rather take a chance on even a uh, a guy like George Pickens, a guy like Amari Cooper, who are going after Zay Flowers but should have more opportunities in their offenses than Zay Flowers. So when it comes down to it, I don't think he'll have a bad season necessarily but I don't see any reason in drafting him at his average drafted projection when you have some outliers like Mark Andrews being first of all the number one focal point and then Derrick Henry coming in you know it doesn't add up well or bode well for a positive Zay Flowers season so I would just you know avoid him at all costs choose a different receiver in the same position uh, and you'll probably be more much more successful. And that's going to do it for this video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you smash that subscribe button, like, comment. I should have some College Football 25 videos coming real soon when the game does come out um, to go along with my fantasy. So if that's something that you also like, then make sure you guys subscribe uh, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.